of really cool things ahead. So make sure you're clicking that subscribe button. One thing I got to tell you, we are going to be doing live streams every day at one o'clock uh, come um, rain or hell, hell or high water. I'm going to be doing a live stream and you can you can subscribe on your phone. You can subscribe on your on your uh, computer, but um, you got to go to YouTube. You got to click that subscribe button and hit the little reminder. And every day that I go live, you'll be able to see it. And that's going to be happening every day at one o'clock. I'm also going to have regular programming coming in in the morning as well as uh, nine o'clock in the evening. So I've got a lot of stuff that I've been building up and creating to help us all get through this uh, isolation period where we are purposely, you know, not going around one another, which changes, really changes the game for, for bourbon because let's face it, our entire life around bourbon is to socialize and be with our friends and talk bourbon. And so the one o'clock hour, what I'm going to try and do, is I'm gonna to try to take you inside distilleries across the country so you can see how every distiller is dealing with uh, the crisis at hand. And today we are going to Angel's Envy. We are talking with uh, Kyle Henderson. Kyle, joining the show. How you doing, my good man? Doing as well as I can, that's for sure. How about yourself? I I'm not bad at all. Not bad at all. You Now, you said uh, uh, before we talked earlier, you said you just lost uh, 40 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Since uh, December 15th. I'm down 40, 41 pounds as of this morning, so feeling good. Now, how are you doing the, uh, how, how are you working out at home? Are you able to, you know, have a, like a gym routine or how do you, what, what are you doing at home? Sort of, um, honestly, not a ton. You know, you saw me, you and I saw each other at the, at the Y fairly often. So I was there a lot. Um, honestly, this week has just been a lot more running around the plant um, doing, doing a lot more activity in the distillery than I normally will. Um, so w when I get back, uh, the, this coming week, we'll probably do some body weight activities and some other things to keep up some of that fitness. Yeah. I, I gotta say that that's probably one of the most difficult things for me. And during this, um, you know, kind of social isolation is working out. Like I go down and downstairs into my little gym and I just don't feel motivated. Yeah, I really don't. Yeah. I, I, so w what's your tip there? How do you stay motivated? Um, I, honestly, I don't know. Uh, maybe you could uh, reward yourself with an extra glass of bourbon after you do a good workout. <laughs> I like that. I think I may do it. So uh, for those who don't know you, uh, Kyle is uh, Wes Henderson's son, Lincoln Henderson's grandson. He is probably, in my opinion, one of the brightest um, young young people we have in the distilling game right now. He is uh, a sharp, sharp whippersnapper. And you just you just went to Yale or Harvard? Which one was it? Uh, Harvard. I finished a Harvard program uh, back in December, actually. So we can say that we have a distiller who went to Harvard, which sure, you know, yeah, that's uh, smarty pants over here. Well, Kyle, how, how's Angels Envy holding up? Like, how are you guys handling social distancing? You know, we, um, we are very fortunate in this whole circumstance. Our fiscal year ends tomorrow, March 31st. Um, so we had some scheduled downtime uh, anyway, just because of the, the year end cutoff. We wanted to keep everything clean from a financial aspect. Um, so the majority of our plant is in a maintenance shutdown right now. Um, so that's, it's been relatively easy to maintain that. Um, we've, we've had to change a few things, you know, our break rooms and locker rooms and things. Uh, we're having to limit the number of personnel. Um, our bottling line is uh, still running every day, but today and tomorrow. Um, so last week, we implemented a, a separated shift. Normally, we run one shift five days a week, uh, an eight-hour shift. Uh, last week, we started splitting that shift. So we're actually running two shifts uh, between six and seven hours. Uh, with splitting the personnel so we have fewer personnel on the shift, uh, allowing for us to ensure that we're able to keep our employees separated from each other uh, as much as, as we physically can in order to still produce product. And, um, you know, safety being the number one thing in mind, we've, we've implemented a lot of other protections. Um, 
we're producing hand sanitizer for our first responders and the hospital um, facilities around the area. So we're making sure that our employees also have access to that. Um, but, you know, we're, we're in a really good situation because we actually plan to be down. Uh, the distillery is coming back up at the end of next week. So as we come back online and, and we're assuming that this will continue to be uh, an issue for the next several weeks at the, uh, at the least, uh, we'll continue to, to build new protocols and new protections in place. Now you guys did. Um, you guys have done a lot in the in terms of, uh, in terms of um, uh, tourism. Like I really think that when I look at when I when I when I kind of like nail down who who's done some of the best work in tourism over the past uh, few years, I always I always bring out Angels Envy. You guys were mm. kicking some butt when it came to your tours, like. So this has got to be a bit of a kick in the pants because you guys close that pretty early. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, we estimate we, we actually have a, an electronic person counter in our main lobby. So we know approximately within a few degrees of, of, uh, of doubt how many people we had. And we were around 102,000 people last year came through our facility. Um, obviously, that's a, a tremendous impact to not only our bourbon and tourism aspect, but the whole city. Um, we were, you know, we, we came on board very early with the KDA when, when the KDA uh, gave it an option for its members to begin to shutter their visitor aspects. Um, and it's purely a, a protective measure, um, not only for the public to, to keep the public safe, um, but more so for our employees. We wanted to be able to keep our operation running safely um, as long as we can. And because of the way that our visitor center and tours are set up, the public tours with 10 or 12 people interact directly with our production employees, with our production equipment. And uh, we just felt that the risk um, is something that we couldn't tolerate in, in order to keep our employees safe. So we ended that, uh, I want to say, uh, March 13th. So it's been coming up on three weeks now. Um, and it's been very difficult, but our visitor center team is doing a lot of activities from home. Um, we had a lot of things, you know, as we are so busy, uh, we had a lot of things that were kind of getting set set aside and, okay, we'll get to it when we can. Uh, so all of those things are are starting to come to the forefront. Uh, we're looking at e-commerce options and uh, and ways for our operation to come back online when we're able to. Wow. Do you, so you were, you were able to keep everybody employed who was on the visit, visitor center team? As of right now, um, everyone is still on payroll, uh, full health insurance, all of our benefits that we normally expect. Uh, and the greater majority of them are able to complete uh, a full week's worth of work from home. And we are actually using some of those employees um, who would normally be in the visitor center to help with the operation on the bottling line. So splitting that shift uh, doesn't allow the line to run as efficiently as we would like. So we're, we're limiting the number of people on the line um, and using one or two of those brand home employees uh, per shift as well. So it, it gives them an opportunity to experience a new part of the business while still ensuring that we're able to care for our employees. Now, uh, the YouTube uh, listeners or viewers right now are asking a lot of really good questions. Uh, this, okay. com this comes in from uh, Mac Dane, and I know we've got we're, we're going to take a tour real quick. Uh, but this comes in yep. from from uh, Mac Dane. Uh, he's just basically asking, like, you know, what what are you doing on like the bottling lines and everything like that to make sure, like, if there is any kind of contaminant in, like, you know, are you what what are you all doing, you know, to reduce that potential, you know, spread, or are you cleaning the the bottles, or what what are you doing there? Sure. Um, so our standard uh, PPE is actually uh, glasses, hats, and gloves. Uh, even outside this circumstance right now, we require that from a protective standpoint for our employees. Um, so that, that, you know, that baseline has really helped us just limit to start. Um, we reduce the number of personnel on the shift. We're able to distance those employees on our line. For those of you who have seen our facility, you know how close we typically are. Uh, we normally have 14 or 15 people on that line. We've reduced that to nine per shift. And uh, we're actually, our maintenance team, because we're in shutdown, uh, is adding some um, uh, plexiglass barriers in places that we're not able to physically distance so that there's a physical barrier in between employees if they need to be close to each other just due to the nature of our operation. You know, I bet you some of the employees were like, why didn't we have this a long time ago? I never liked that guy that left me anyway. <laughs> you know, you would think that, but if you're standing next to the same, you know, 10 people 40 hours a week, 
Um, just that little bit of talking you have back and forth, even if you just talk about the weather a hundred times a day, um, it, it is, it is better than nothing because as a lot of you guys know, being, you know, stuck at home a lot, it can get tiring. So even if you're talking to the same person about the same thing, just that social, I can see a person, maybe I can't breathe on you. Maybe you're 10 feet away, but I can have some kind of interaction is, is very helpful for mental health. Oh my God, isn't that the truth? Well, this is, I think when it comes to Angel's Envy, there's usually one question at hand, and that's when the cash strength is coming out. Now, with uh, with all of this delay and everything, Whiskey Jason asked the question, will the launch of any special releases be postponed? Uh, not according to our current supply chain. Um, you know, we, we were purchased by Bacardi about five years ago, and um, they've got a very robust program uh, business continuity program for honestly for situations like this to the point where there was a literal all right what happens if there's a global crisis a pandemic a, uh, a economic failure whatever it is how do we ensure that our operation continue business uh, so they kicked that uh, we call them bcp business continuity plan into action and uh, as of right now everything for the next 12 months is still on target for release okay well, I think um, we'll uh, we'll have more questions coming down the line, but let's take a look at the tour. What does Angels Envy look like right now amidst this uh, sure. so social distancing? And we got to see the screens that uh, you set up. I got to see that. So uh, they're they're not up now. I'll see if they're installing. But uh, as of right now, I'm actually standing in our still room. Um, so I'll kind of show you around. Actually, stopped public tours. We didn't change a whole lot on, on the tour path itself, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know, this is where you would normally come downstairs, uh, look at our still room. So you come outside, look at the pot still, you can see all the, the lack of people. Normally there's always people walking around outside and now it's, you know, one or two people an hour, not very populated at all. Wow. So we come out, I'll try to be steady as I can here. We come out into our, Fermenter room, and this is a wide open space, so it's very easy. Um, we have our employees that are staying on one side of the line or another. Normally, this is our, our standard tour path. Uh, it's about 10 feet across, so as long as you're on one side of the area or another, nice and easy to, uh, to get around. Uh, and because we're under a uh, uh, maintenance shutdown, uh, we do have a few contractors in the building. So one thing that we changed, we normally wouldn't do, We've actually given them a barrier. They're, they're supposed to stay within the barrier that we provided them, and our employees will not also be going in that barrier. So it, it provides a, a, an exclusion area for our contractors and an exclusion area for our employees to make sure we're keeping everybody separate. Wow. So, so you can see the area in front of us. People that you would normally work with right. just like on a, on a routine basis, you're now requiring them to say, all right, got to be six feet over here. I know you're putting the pump yes. in, but six feet away from me. Yeah. So right now we're actually having our cooker re-insulated. We tore the insulation off, did some repairs, and they're re-insulating it. Uh, normally we would keep a distance anyway, just because they're working from height, falling materials. There's actually a physical caution tape barrier further out than we normally would, so that while they're working, we have a clear six-foot distance. And then, like right here, uh, we're doing some uh, some welding work. Our maintenance team is doing work up there. So we've got our fire watch normally well away from anybody. But he's standing a good six feet away from me while I pass him. So, you know, making sure we're maintaining distances while still being able to do the activities we need to do to keep the plan running. Wow. Are you using I'm going to head to the, you know, um, so the only thing we've asked for those employees you got me? Sorry. Yeah. So the only thing we ask for those employees is that they, you know, they distance themselves, but it's not too difficult. You know, it's a 50,000 square foot facility for two people. Uh, so it's pretty easy for them to stay away from each other. Uh, one place where, you know, we're talking about some of the changes we need to make is this bottling line. Um, so you can see we've got ladders and some equipment out. Uh, they're going to be installing some plexiglass barriers uh, in some key points uh, this, this coming 48 hours. Um, so material coming off the line and it travels down this conveyor and then you start the handwork. So normally we would have 14 or 15 people on this, uh, on this conveyor line at a time. We've reduced that to nine or 10. 
and that allows each position to have some significant distance from every other position. So this is the strip stamp where they put the label on the very top of the bottle. And normally there'd be two people opposing each other. We've reduced that to one person and one person only. As it moves down the line, there's different things that uh, are being done. St the strip stamp is being centered on the back of the bottle. Uh, let's see, what do you, can you, there we go. Uh, it continues down the conveyor. We put a shrink sleeve on it. So now the strip stamp starts there, six feet of distance or more. The second person coming in, then another six feet of distance or more, we're putting the shrink sleeve on before it goes in the heat tunnel. So this first half of the line is nice and segregated, relatively easy to do. Where we run into challenges is after the shrink sleeve is on, you can see we've already started to install some of this plexiglass sheeting. Normally we have six to eight people at this table doing the side labels. This is where our, our most difficult uh, change is and, and will be. Um, so we're reducing this to three people and we're building barriers in place so that they continue to work in the small area while having a physical barrier around them. Okay. So this, uh, this is starting, they're, they're beginning to take some bracketry down. They've come out and measured a few times. Things like a reference bottle, making sure there's a place that the bottles can still be accessed uh, while allowing for that physical distancing. And then as you move down the line, the person who's putting the bottles in the box is always been segregated on their own. So that's, that's nice and easy. And then once it continues down the line, it is taped and stacked on a pallet that's a good six feet away as well. Um, so, you know, not a ton of drastic changes. Uh, the biggest change is just the number of people. Um, so in order to get our daily uh, production out, uh, we're splitting that shift up. We're running uh, slightly more hours per day. So instead of one eight-hour shift, we're running two six-hour shifts. Uh, so about 12 hours a day just due to the reduced efficiency by having less people on the line. You know, it's interesting. Whiskey Jason actually, as you said, there's not a lot of changes. He actually uh, commented, this is fairly similar to the tour I took there almost three years ago. And mm -hmm. I myself have been there many, many, many times. And it is. It's like, it's like I'm taking a tour with you just without the people in front of me and behind me and the bottom that, line and all that. That is pretty much it. Wow. So, um, we're going to skip around a little bit. We'll go into our processing area. So I, I mentioned that um, we were making hand sanitizer for healthcare and first responder workers. So in this room, we've got a makeshift setup that was allowing us to do that. So we have all of our spare materials, our tank that we're mixing in, the ethanol tanks where we are distilling the alcohol. Um, so this is a class one, division one room. It's a, an explosive area. Uh, so we wanted to maintain, you know, our normal safety protocols. We're dealing with 90% uh, alcohol, 80% alcohol in the finished product. And in order to safely do that, we did this in an area we normally wouldn't. Um, so we went through a lot of, uh, we call it management of change, change management. Anybody who's been in an industrial setting definitely understands what that is. It's just a good safety protocol to be doing. And uh, we went ahead and batched. Uh, so far, we've batched about 1,000 gallons. Uh, about 500 of that has been picked up, and I have another 500 or so um, that are supposed to be picked up later this afternoon into tomorrow for um, all kinds of different facilities. Now, did you uh, did you purchase GNS, or did you guys outfit your stills to, to make uh, alcohol that high percentage? Because if I recall, your still wouldn't be able to hit that unless you would have changed it up a little bit. We made a few, a few changes. Uh, the last distillation run before we shut down, uh, we were able to get uh, not quite to the uh, the 96 percent alcohol that the uh, the original guidance was, um, but but we actually got a concession um, from the TTB to use lower proof, and then that concession was approved uh, for everyone who was doing this action. So um, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was 87 or 88 percent alcohol, um, and we actually are working on a source of GNS to continue to come in to see if we can produce some more hand sanitizer as well. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and are you all paying taxes on that or are you, because there is, there's one form that you still have to pay like a tax. And then there's another form at the moment where you do not have to pay a tax. I know, I know lobbyists are working to change that, but it's, you guys aren't exactly, it's not like the government saying like, oh, hey, hey thanks a lot for doing this. You're tax free now. Yeah. No, they're, they're still taxing the shit out of you. So we, uh, we do expect to, to pay taxes. 
Um, so in, in our case, it's $13 and 50 cents a proof gallon, just like everybody else. Uh, and the way that uh, we have been set up is we'll actually be applying for a credit on some of those taxes, part of the denaturing process. Um, the way we're, we're managing it with our, uh, our, our compliance team is we pay the taxes up front. Uh, we apply for a credit based on the processes that we are using, and we expect to get uh, $12.50 of that $13.50 back. So basically a dollar a gallon uh, versus $13.50 a gallon. Uh, one of the good things of, of, with Bacardi and, and you know, what we're trying to do with this is uh, one of the phrases we use is just do the right thing. Um, and, you know, even if we were unable to get that tax credit, we're going to do this anyway. It's already happened. We've done it. Uh, and if we have to eat the tax, we'll eat the tax. It's not the end of the world. Uh, Bacardi's, you know, a, a large global business, and they can afford to um, to donate that for the cause. Well, I appreciate that. But still, I feel like uh, and I and I know the Distilled Spirits Council is working on the Kentucky Distillers Association is working on it. But I feel like you all should be getting a break here. And I know it, it, it's the government, so it takes time. And there's a kajillion things they're having to deal with right now. So I'm hopeful that, you know, in the interim, that credit will work out. And in the long term, they'll fix it. So I guess uh, yeah. hopefully you won't have to pay that full tax because others are in the same Yeah, we, we believe they will. I mean, we've got, I think, the Discus team, they're meeting every other day. Um, I haven't gotten a call today. Uh, I know the KDA, Eric, and his team is meeting almost hourly uh, to work on approving this. And we've seen a lot a lot of things happen in the last two weeks. Um, honestly, some of the fastest action I've ever seen from government. Um, so it's it's really good that they're they're trying to do the right thing as well. But but it still tells you how slow they really are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, this is something that would have taken about three years. Uh, and for three years worth of work to happen in two weeks is incredible. Yeah. So here's a question for you, like moving barrels. Have you all um, changed that at all? Because I think you got to be a little bit closer than six feet in order to move a good quantity of barrels. You there? I lost you. Sorry about that. Oh, I lost you. Uh, the question was like, you know, in order to move a lot of barrels, you're going to have to be a little closer together than six feet. What has been, uh, what, how have you all managed uh, the movement of barrels? We've actually just reduced um, the number of barrels per shift. Uh, so we are already running two shifts on our warehousing and processing side. Uh, and typically we are only handling barrels on first shift. Uh, and that required two people essentially to move the volume that we were doing. All we did was split that between first and second shift. Uh, and that made it very easy. So one person is doing... Uh, half of the work on first shift, one person is doing half of the work on second shift. Very easy, just in our volume right now, for us to allow us to do that. Yeah. So as you know, the Kentucky just passed a shipping bill that allows distillers to ship directly to consumers. Is uh, yep. Sean, Sean brought this up in the chat on YouTube. Is this something that you're that you're excited about? Are you looking forward to like being able to ship your cast strength to your buddies? Um. From a personal aspect, yeah, it's great. From a, from a business aspect, it's, it's more interesting. Um, our, our brand home team has been very much looking forward to uh, House Bill 415 passing and um, giving us the ability to ship from our retail business direct to certain consumers is a, is a good business opportunity. Um, but yeah, from a personal aspect, I, I prefer you know, taking that and hand delivering to our, our fine employees and fine, uh, fine friends in the industry. Okay. All right. Well, I th I think I saw you walking towards some barrels. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So these are all new barrels uh, that we've just brought in, uh, just pending our startup of the distillery again next week. Nice. Ready yeah. to have some of that. Just sweet, get everything staged. Have some of that sweet liquid gold in there. Yeah. Well, Kyle, I really appreciate the tour. Did you have anything else that you you wanted to show us, or do we hit it all? Um. I think that's pretty much it. We looked at the sanitizer operation. Um, you know, like I said, most of the changes that you'll see, um, is, you know, looking, one of the cool things is because we're downtown, if you walk down the street, you can look and see what we're doing in our operation and about 90% of it. Uh, so when the line starts back up on Thursday, you can walk down Jackson Street, look in the window, and you can see what we're doing to ensure our employees are protected. Okay. Well, 
it's going to be uh, it's going to be great when we're able to to fire everything back up and be back to normal. And when that time when that time comes, my friend, I look forward to sitting down and having a nice uh, a nice bourbon with you, or maybe maybe we're see you, need to do that. or maybe see you at the gym when uh, I've lost forty pounds too. Hopefully, hey, we'll get <laughs> we'll get there. All right, brother. Thanks for your time and uh, listen. Be safe out there and give uh, give my best wishes to the family. I will. Wash your hands, guys. Yes, and stay six feet away from one another. <laughs> six feet. Thanks, Fred. Have a good afternoon. All right, brother. Cheers. So there you have it. That was uh, Kyle Henderson from uh, Angels Envy. And Kyle, like I said, he is a he is a talented, talented young young man. Incredible distiller. Bright, bright future ahead of him. And it, in covering this industry, I can count on my hands. You know how many, how many uh, young people come into the business, and then they, then they stay for for the next you know ten fifteen years. Uh, a lot of times, you get some young talent in. They find out it's not as glamorous as they thought it would be, and then they kind of move on to something else. Um, Kyle is in for the long haul. He's uh, he's an incredible distiller. Great human being, great father, great husband. I enjoy him uh, immensely. I always enjoy talking to him. So that was that was uh, that was nice to see him giving us that tour. And it's not going to be the last one. So every day at one o'clock, I'm going to try to have a distiller, and we're going to take these tours, and we're going to go around the country. We're going to find out how everybody's dealing with this isolation, the social separation the coronavirus, the distilling industry is my, you know, is my passion. And it breaks my heart to see what uh, the current predicament has done to the, to the community. Like right now you have an industry that has basically, has basically held on to tourism. I have long said that the history of bourbon is all about, has been about consumption. And this is the first time in the history of bourbon that we have another component called tourism. Well, right now that's, that's possibly slipping away and I, we can't let that happen. We have to continue engaging. We have to continue supporting these distillers, especially the small craft distillers. And I'm going to bring as many of them as I can to you. And we're going to hear their stories and we're going to find out how they're dealing with the coronavirus. And hopefully, that can that can lend to you, um, you know, buying a bottle from them, supporting them in some way. There was a survey that came out a couple weeks ago from the ACSA that said that two thirds of American craft distillers will be going out of business because of this. We can't let that happen, folks. We got bartenders struggling. We got distillers struggling. We have to be there for our community, for the distilling business, for the bartenders, for the hospitality business. This can't get us down. This can't beat us. We've been survivors long before the coronavirus ever came. And this is my little world. This is my little pocket of the world. And I'm going to do everything that I can to try and help it. So make sure you're clicking that subscribe button. Don't miss uh, a 1 o'clock interview. And I've got some tastings coming up. Also, just saw the latest episodes of the Curation Desk. I've got my wife on there. I've got Pat Heiss from Wilderness Trail and uh, Steve Fontaine from uh, Limestone Branch. So you want to make sure that you are clicking that subscribe button and uh, following us on YouTube. Not everything will be coming over to Facebook and Twitter like this is. I'm able to do this through uh, some technology, uh, some streaming technology that I have purchased uh, Restream is a, is a great asset for anyone who's trying to figure out how to do this. And let's get through this, folks. Let's get through this. We are not alone. We are going to survive this. And in my world, I want to help as many of the craft distillers and bartenders and hospitality workers as I possibly can. So let's tune in every day at 1 o'clock. More shows coming down the pike. Also got tastings at night. So click that subscribe button, and I'll see you later. And remember, vodka sucks. Cheers.